before the question starts, it tells you that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. I must say, if I was writing the question, I would have said that the gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Because there isn't actually anything in the question that, that has that much acceleration. But either way, it gives you the number that you need. So if you know the mass of something, you can find its weight in newtons. So for the first question, it tells you the mass of the ball. It tells you it, it falls a distance of 0.2 metres in 5 seconds, assuming the ball reaches terminal speed within a fraction of a second. So in other words, we're assuming that it's almost as soon as it's released, it gets to its terminal speed, and that it travels that 0.2 metres in 5 seconds, travelling at a constant speed. So the first thing to find is what is the terminal speed? So what is the constant speed you would have if you travel 0.2 metres in 5 seconds? So that's a really easy question. Don't need to use Subat or anything complicated like that. You know the distance, you know the time, you find this, the speed. Part 2 to find the drag force when it falls at the terminal speed. So to answer this question, we've got to sort of think about the forces. There's the weight pulling downwards, and we're able to find the weight because we know the mass, and we know how strong gravity is. There's also the drag force acting upwards, opposing the motion, but we know that the speed is constant, so there's no acceleration. So if there's no acceleration on that must mean there's no resultant force. So what can we say about the downwards force and the upwards force if they have zero resultant? So think about that, you should be able to find what the drag force upwards has got to be. For part B, this is an explaining question. Now it does tend that in exam questions, the candidates who do really well are the ones who are able to write sensible answers to the questions that are explaining things. It's not just about using equations and putting numbers in. It's being able to write in words and communicate your ideas. So if you had a smaller steel ball, how would that affect the rate at which it fell in the liquid? Obviously the three possible answers are that a smaller ball falls faster than a big ball, or it falls at the same speed as a big ball, or it falls slower than a big ball. You've got to decide which one it is and give your reasons. To answer this question, you need to remember that the amount of drag force depends on the speed of the ball and the surface area. And that if you get a smaller ball, the surface area goes down, but the mass and the weight go down by more. So that should help you work out what will happen to the speed it falls at. Question 2 is an explaining question, so there's no calculations at all here. Explain why cyclists can reach a higher top speed by crouching over the handlebars instead of sitting upright while pedalling. So to answer this, I think we've got to assume that the force that he's able to pedal with won't change. So the forward force is going to be the same. So it's a matter then of thinking what happens to the, the drag force. And we need to remember that when, when the cyclist is going as fast as they can, the drag force, caused by a combination of the, the speed and the shape, the drag force will be equal to the forward pedalling force. Question 3 says it's about a vehicle of mass 32,000 kilograms or 32 tonnes, so it's a blooming big vehicle, it's some sort of lorry. It tells you the maximum force that the engine can produce, and it also tells you the top speed that the, the vehicle could go at on a level road. And the first thing we're asked for is the maximum acceleration from rest. Well, presumably, if the question says what the maximum force the engine can produce is, when the engine's producing its maximum force, that's when you get the maximum acceleration. Since it's starting from rest, well, when it's setting off, it doesn't have any speed, so there's no air resistance. So when it sets off, the only force is the forward force. So if you're going to use F equals MA, that should help you to know what force to put in for the forward force. The mass, there's only one mass in the question that you could use. Part B is assuming that you've already worked out the acceleration. It's assuming that it's travelling with that much acceleration, so it's a constant acceleration. 
So it becomes a SUVAC question. How far do you have to travel to go from 0 to 12 meters per second when you've got the amount of acceleration you've already calculated? So it's a SUVAC question and if you've been doing the homeworks you should be really good at those by now. So I'm not going to give any more clues on those. Question 4. Explain why a vehicle has a higher top speed on a downhill stretch of road than on a level road. It's pretty obvious in common sense, but to get the marks you've got to show you know some physics. So you've got to show that you understand about forces and about resultant forces. When it's on the level road, the top speed comes around when the drag force is equal to the engine force from the engine. But when it's going downhill, you've got to think, is there an extra force driving it forward, apart from what the engine can do? And we're assuming that the engine force will be the same as when it was on the level. But is there an extra force driving it forward? What is that force? Where does it come from? And why does that mean that it can go faster until the drag force equals the, uh, the forward force?